Pop Spotlight, brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harry from Bulls Tabletop News with Michael with Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. And we're back with another Tabletop Spotlight. Michael. Yeah. Oh man. I got some more uh, Courage Drawn Courage Run Overlords. Yes, I'm I think, super pumped. I think everybody pronounces the first word a different way. Yeah, it's it, it's Courage Drawn Courage Run. Yeah. Let's call them Arcanauts. Let's call them the <laughs> Arcanauts. Yeah, we've got the Arcanaut Ironclad, which I'm super pumped about getting into. And this is the big, uh, big fancy ship. I'm, I'm pumped about We'll that. get into that in a bit. And who else did you bring? This is Brock Grunson, the Grunson. Lord Magnate of Beric Nar. He didn't think I could say it. I didn't. That's why I made him say it. It's Archeon all over again. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Anyway, yeah, we got Brock Grunson. He's the uh, the named hero yeah. with his uh, Endrin balloon and mustache and guns. Don't and forget the... the most important thing, the magnificent top hat mm -hmm. that he has, which mm -hmm. is... So. I'm super pumped about We'll get uh, into all of that in a bit. Yeah, let's do it right now. Let's take a look inside the boxes. Arcanaut, Ironclad time, and, and of course... Brock Grunson. Grunson. I'm pretty pumped about this one. I, uh, I just want, I need to draw more attention real quick to Brock. Let's start with Brock, how about that? He's got, and you'll see this, but he's got a top hat and a mustache set of guns. Not just one, but two mustache guns. Oh, so cool. Let's slam him down real quick. Sure. Him over. So we got Brock there. Of course, he's got his floating Endrin balloon. Um, ugh, losing it for a second. Uh, you can see he's got an Athematic Saw, the Magnate's Charter, which is just his big old gun, <laughs> uh, and Grunson's Boast, which is his other big gun. So It's like the Magna Carter. A little bit. It's not. But He's the Paragon of Prosperity from the City of the First Sunrise. Yeah. Uh, side note, uh, in the uh, Duradin uh, slash, not Duradin culture anymore, it's the Karadron Overlord, mm -hmm. it's formerly the Duradins, um, they're all about the, the you get power if you're successful yep. style of management. So... Um, Yep, the reason he's the uh, paragon of prosperity is because he has been nothing but successful. Yeah, so, he's he's um, he's kind of their uh, he's got their like a ninety eight percent awesome record. Mm -hmm. Two percent doesn't count. So two percent just slightly less awesome. Yeah, still awesome, but not quite. Yeah, it's a height thing. I think. Yeah. Well, <laughs> opening up. Why, here. why do you think they're flying around? You know exactly. Yeah, so he doesn't ups. have too much going on. Oh, um, oh, there we go. Hey, that's a big. That is not a 32 mil base, folks. No, that is not. bigger than a. He's actually also got three flight stamps here. I think um, this is actually a 50. That looks like a 50. Uh, it's bigger than the Terminator base. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm pretty sure that's a 50. Got his little rulebook here. We'll get into that in a second. He said he actually has like a sprue of three flight stands. Do you need extras, I guess. Um, or maybe different poses. Maybe different poses. And on the box, he's only using one. So maybe if you know you need more, maybe or he if just one breaks. Maybe he needs some help. I don't maybe know. Maybe so. Who knows? Anyway, we've got two little sprues here. Let's take, take a look at the first one here. Take a quick look here. Zoom on in. Here we go. So you can see here, this one is mostly his uh, his engine balloon. Yep. Uh, you see he's got his guns. Uh, there's his little head right there with his top hat. Man, the, the amount of detail on oh, these yeah. kits is just ridiculous. I put together one of the gun haulers yesterday, and yeah. I was amazed at how much, uh, how many intricate, intricate little details were on there. Speaking of intricate little details, look at the gears, the teeth of the gears yep. on that bit. Everyone is that individually is uh, cut in. The thing that shocks me the most about all the panels and open spaces, these individual tiny little rivets. Which yeah. you would think they could just like drill a little hole in, but they're actually embossed raised rivets on every little bit. Which is ridiculous. Uh -huh. And again, it's it fits the whole theme and Absolutely. the look of, of all of the Arcanaut stuff. Absolutely. So I'll flip it over real quick. Oh, yep. Show it back. It is hollow. Yep. So if you wanted to... Uh, Which uh, is, I think actually uh, surprised a lot of people where something like the, you know, the Ironclad here in a second or any other ships, they're all, all hollow inside. And yeah, they're not heavy at all. No, so they stand on the flight stands just fine. Yeah, so there's those little no little there whatsoever. flight stands. Everybody's worried about breaking, snapping. No, no problem. No, they're a lot lighter than you think, and they actually float in water. Fun fact: if you seal them correctly, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So you could totally have a pirate ship absolutely in the water. Anyway, let's take a look at the other sprue real quick. All right, not this that is... I'm gonna do that. Well, this slipped. one, this one has uh, the other parts of his body. It looks like in the other parts of his engine, yeah. his saw, his chain sword. I suppose it's a sword-like chain, chain. Yeah, chain-like sword. Yeah, no, it's a. It's it's more of a. It's a chain sword, folks. Come it's on. a chain sword, pretty much. Can we? Um, but yeah, no, it's. I can't it's, wait to see the conversions to 40k. That's all oh, I'm saying. Yeah. There's just... gonna be a lot of people making squats out of these guys. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's. I mean, they're great kits. He's got you know, pretty simple to yeah, put together. He's got a lot of bits, but um. 
it, it's fairly standard. Yeah, it looks like a lot of stuff, but again, instruction manual, we'll go through that one real fast. You can see it's actually not that bad. No, um, he's he got- He does have quite a few bits, but it's- He's got manageable. a couple fiddly bits here, especially with his guns. There's a couple little, mm -hmm. you know, little And it is actually weapons, in color, but... so if you're wondering mm -hmm. where, which parts go where, things like that, you, you're you're covered there, so. The balloon, obviously, pretty easy to put together. Uh, with this guy, as opposed to the ships, you could probably put them all together and paint them. The ships you'll want to do yeah. in a couple stages, but- uh, yeah. With this guy, you can probably put them all together and be fine. Yeah. Uh, if you wanted to paint them kind of like the like the the box art, you get some of that uh, the the gold spray. Yeah, they've got they've got some recommendations there. Um, yeah, you know, it's it's pretty standard, but the the gold or silver spray is probably not a bad place to yeah. start. Uh, they only recommend one flying base, so I do I guess these are just spares, you know, just in spares. case. Uh, his rules, real quick, and again, if you want to see these rules closer up, you can totally check them out on the website. Yeah, you just click on. We'll go through them real quick, though. Yeah, check them out. So his his main gun, Grunson's bow, is the big gun above his head. Two attacks, three up, two up, which is kind pretty of, saucy. Uh, and a minus one run for D three. That's that's not. That's not that bad. No, with, I would uh, qualify that as good. Yeah, two two shots hitting hitting on a three up, wounding on a two up, and then D three damage each. Mm -hmm. Potential of six damage per per turn his just other, from that gun. His other guns are fairly standard. Um, three shots, three up, three up, minus one one, three up, four yeah. up. Uh, his saw is pretty nasty with three up, two up, minus two, and D three with four yeah. attacks. Which is you're equivalent scary. to like an orc brute at that point. Yeah. Which you know he's he's pretty beast. So and he's rocking a three up save with a twelve inch move. I might add. Yeah, that Endrin is uh, that's moving him pretty quick. So yeah. his special rules. He's got a lot of pretty cool special rules actually. He can charge and he has sort of a, a lesser version of like a maw crusher ability where it's yeah. he'll charge and he deals mortal wounds. That's his Lord Magnate moves. Uh, Champion of Barakar. He gets to just reroll hit and wound rolls of one if they're against. Which Heroes is pretty monsters. cool if you remember that he gun knows. that hits on a wounds on a two up. Yeah, he can Nova charge himself basically. Yeah, uh, he can give himself um, damage characteristic increases on his uh, on his saw. He gets a solid three damage instead of D three if you Ooh. roll well. Um, and of course, he can hitch onto a, a ship and doesn't count for their uh, overburden capacity. So he just sort of floats along with the ship and he then just hooks on. Yeah, and, and then he just drops on and starts carving it up with his sword. Yeah. So. And his command ability is pretty cool. If Brock Gunson uses his ability, he invokes his first and most significant commentary on the code to the victor goes to spoils. Uh, until your next hero phase, friendly and card on Overlord units within 18 inches can charge even if they ran in the same turn. It's pretty good yeah. if you consider uh, these guys aren't known for their speed, so you can totally surprise somebody. At least not the basic run troops. Move. Yeah. The, the, the flyers, the other you know balloon guys coming soon. Uh, and the ships are pretty quick. But you know, if you drop that on a big blob of the uh, the Arcanaut companies, yeah, with their you know weapons and various guns, it's only like that'd a be pretty nasty. Move. Yeah, they're pretty. To begin with, they got the short little legs. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Pretty anyway, cool stuff. That's Brock. He's got a lot of cool stuff going on. So let's take a look at the Ironclad. All right, here we are. Ironclad time. Flipping this box over. That there's a, a big lot kit. going on. This is a big kit. There's a lot of guns in this thing. For sure. I love this guy. Look at that. Dude. He's, just, he's just hanging along. This is one of those clip on Fixing things. Fixing it up. About. This is a, that's an engineer. Like, I like the router. navigator up top here with his yep. weird compasses and stuff, which he's actually available separately as well, but we don't have him yeah. with us. He's got a blister you can pick up. Yeah, but he's just a blister so you can yeah. see him. He's yeah. a single character on foot, so. I love this though. This There's a ton, lot ton of, of crew. options. My personal favorite is the Skyhook. Why do you like the Skyhook? Well. The skyhook, and you'll see this in the rules, if you hit an enemy with it, you can move your ship closer to that enemy <laughs> after having harpooned them in. Nice. Which, I think it'd be more fun if you drag them towards you, Could but do both. It, it, it's fun to just sort of move yourself yeah. closer by hooking I would like someone. the option to do both, because that would be kind of neat. Uh, yeah, I could see them, you know, having difficulty, like, pulling somebody out of, you know, yeah. Uh, cohesion with their unit and stuff, but if it was against like, a hero, maybe, and you just like yank them towards you, Get over that'd be kind of fun. I'd so. name my ship the SS Scorpion at that point. Mine would be the Roadhog. The Ro oh, nice. Yeah, nice. That's an Overwatch. It is an Overwatch reference. Yep. Uh, Roadhog, not my favorite character in the game, but still fun. Well, while you're opening, what is your favorite character in the field Overwatch? His name is Lucio. Nice. And he is the greatest character. You're such a skater boy. All right. <laughs> Didn't see that maybe, one maybe not. All right. <laughs> All right, so we got the rule book there. But let's take it out. We'll, that, we'll oh my god! Wow. Okay. Didn't expect that. Time out. That's look that's at that. a big old piece. I could wear that as a shirt. Yeah, almost. It's not really, but almost. It's it's as big as my hand. That's that is. Wow. wow. I expected it to be in way more piece than that. We are legitimately shocked. At this. I uh, I I really am. Okay, hang on. There's there's like three or four sprues. There's there. a big old box of sprues there. Two. 
three sprues. Okay, three big sprues and a, and a, some, a and flight stand. This is this is how confident they are in this their flight stand. And again, this will hold it. Like we know this, but we've seen it happen yeah. with the other ships. Uh, and last but not least, I do want to show this off. It's a big old base. It's a big old base. As Just, reference, as reference, here's the 15 millimeter we yeah. looked at earlier. And then you can kind of see. Pretty much the exact length you need right there. Wow, so. crazy. All right, so that that's everything. Impressive. That's everything in the box. Box is now empty, so box now has the base. Uh, let's start with this one and get to the big ones later. Okay, okay, hand those over. So we've got the deck of the ship here Yar. on this one, which I actually love the detail in the sort of uh, flat yeah. areas of the deck of the ship with sort of the, the grip. Yeah, it, it, I was telling Drake this uh, a couple weeks ago when we, when we were looking at the other stuff. It, it reminds me of like uh, ocean liners from like yeah. the Titanic era. Yeah, exactly. Or, or the U-boats, yeah, uh, German U-boats. It's got that yeah. grip on there. I can um, see that. Yeah, but it's got the cool stairs. Like it's it's so well designed with the stairs and yeah. leading up to the. Upper I think it's really areas. cool that they actually do have stairs. Yeah, on it's the not deck. just like a you know yeah. increase. You also have all the crew. It looks like here this all their insane. screws and bodies yeah. and. Again, I like the company a couple weeks back. These guys are mostly like four or five pieces at max. Yeah, it's like torso legs torso are all legs. together, yep. arms, head, and maybe arms. weapon or something. Yep. Um, Very you cool. You can see on the on the side here. There's some more panels and uh, fins and rudders and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And again, this ship is going to be empty on the inside. Yeah. I also want to show off the racks of bombs that you're going to be putting <laughs> on the side of this thing, right. including the drill bombs right here and the frag bombs right here, Very which cool. are incredible. And we'll get to those in the rules. I just I love the fact that it is going to be hollow on the inside. If you yeah. want to run wires or lights, you should totally do it. This Absolutely. Would be an awesome to do it with. Next right. one, we got the engine here. We're going to look at the, the, the big the old engines. balloon. Yes. Now what I love about these mostly is that it has, uh, and you can't really see it on this side since it's sort of upside down, but on this side, it has these little walkways. Oh, wow. On the edge, so you could actually pose dudes there if you wanted, if you had some extra. Oh, you totally. You could pose some guys there fixing something up or doing whatever. That is super cool. It's such a nice little detail that I don't think too many people notice, but it's a I, great little This addition. whole kit is just redundant. Like, like again, we've seen this kind of bit before yeah, the, with the crazy the gators area. and stuff like that. But uh -huh. again, every single one of these bits just has so much going on. Yeah, I love the the giant you know anchor. Oh yeah, it's a good it's a good one as well. There's the big old sky hook wow, right there. Wow, sky, sky hookers. The piping Wait. and stuff is a nice touch. Yeah. So. Over here I like the uh, the doors. I also love they didn't have to go to this detail. They even detailed the inside of this, this <laughs> little one here. Yeah, like so a little somehow, bit. There's some gauges and stuff in there. You know, you didn't have to do that. No, but they did. somehow if you get to actually see as that, as well as the door again, yeah. you'll close the door probably. And close right, the right. They detailed it, you know, nicely. That's super cool. Yeah. So. Wow. Really well done. All right. Let's take a look at the, the last hole. but not least the beast. That is the hole. Look at the that. beast. That is cool. That is a big old piece. And again, I expect it to be in way more pieces than this. You know what's crazy is the uh, the front part, like this part here. The bow, as it's the, called. The bow, where the teeth are. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's like not part of this kit. I thought this was just gonna be like pressed plastic, but that's, it's no. not, it's different. Um, no. Wow. But that is a huge, huge hole. Yeah. I mean, I'm just sort of amazed on. at how much how much stuff they got going on here. Yeah. These engines and, and valves and things like that. The crazy like bomb thing, the mines. Yeah. And actually, I wonder where is that piece for the... The grill? The, yeah, the grill. I'm curious where it is now. Might be on the other, other bit. Probably on the other one. Yeah, See but it's here. hollow on the other. There's lots of room in here. Uh, <laughs> and again, it saves on the on the weight of the, uh, oh, the ship. Oh, here, here. Yeah. There's the grill. It saves on the weight of the ship. Um, but it, so, so it'll stay something, on the stand. Something like this little fight stand can support the whole yeah, thing. But that's bonkers. Yeah. It's just... Now, that said, you will probably have to glue this fight stand to it. I would. You probably can't just do, you know, no. like a screamer or something and like just set it on there. It will just fall off. But if you glue yeah. it, it'll be fine. I guess you could probably get a really, really powerful magnet in there, in there as well if you wanted to, yeah. to do that. Yeah, maybe a couple magnets. Yeah. You might also want to grab a couple of spares, maybe a couple of spares from the Brock set and see if you can do a couple flight stands to magnetize it. Yeah, it yeah. might help if you do two or three, but um, yeah. yeah. There's there's different ways. I'm you just kind of check them out in alarm, shock sure. at the size of this hull. It's I thought it was- ridiculous. I thought it was gonna be in way more pieces than this and way less yeah. uh, impressive than this, I suppose. I thought it was just gonna be a solid, like, two pieces that kind of clip together like that, but yeah. no, it's the, the hole is like that. Yeah, but then this piece fits right in there. 
You got oh, all the wings nice and propellers and rudders and fins and everything. So crazy jar. Very impressive kit. Things going on here. Oh yeah. Oh, I love this little crate too. It's got like yeah. guns inside. Oh, that's that's, another, that's a touch I love on the gun hauler as well, where whatever gun you Oil pick, can. there's sort of a, a crate of that ammunition yeah. that's sitting behind the gunman for that. So which is they've, fun. They've got those little touches on here as well, which is great. Also, I, I just again call this out. The rudders are the same style as the other ones. Mm -hmm. I know that's a weird thing to call out, but um, they're very they're very good at keeping it consistent. Yeah, the consistency is just amazing. Mm -hmm. All right, super cool kit. Let's look at the rules. So you can see on here, of course, the constructed thing. There's those big racks of bombs we were talking about. And it is it is full color again. Yep, a lot of different cool piping. And so you can get an idea of it here, but um, yeah, it'll hold on the one flight stand. Again, Which if is you glue impressive. it in. Yeah. Um, we got the, the assembly instructions here. I would definitely follow this one step by step, uh, especially for your first one. Pull it out just a bit. Um, but yeah, definitely be careful with this one. Uh, you don't want to just you know glue one bit in the wrong space. Yeah, there then... there are some spots where you are going to want to apply glue, and then uh -huh. spots where you're not going to want to apply glue. Yeah, and it's like cool. That, again, we've mentioned this before. These are color coded, coated. So the yellow is typically where you want to put the glue, mm -hmm. and the blue is the bit that's going on there. In this case, and with this sort of thing, with these Aether Shot carbines or yeah. cannons. Um, you may want to paint these and seal them before you glue them in. Yes. Uh, just yes. because if they're going to be rotating around, you're going to be scraping off your paint. Yes. Um, or if you do just want to glue them in and ignore this instruction, then yeah. you should be fine. You, you could, but there's things but, like the rudder that are going to spin around. Yeah, the rudder, if you want to spin that. Glue. Yeah. And don't, it's red. You may not want to add glue to that. Which is um, nice. Of course, obviously, if you, if you buy the kit, you can do whatever you like with it. Yeah, it's your kit, um, man. I'm not going to judge. So yeah, you got some more, some more, you know, articulated cannons. And if you're wondering, well, stuff. how do these stay in place? There's these little bracket thing that that mm -hmm. they go behind them to keep them holds them right around. in. So this is actually all the assembly for the uh, deck and the interior. We're going to skip around. Attach the hull, yeah. basically. Your rudder, of course, is also Ooh, mobile. Move. You don't want to glue that necessarily. And here's all the different guns you can build for the, the primary weapon. I'm just gonna skip around. I wanted to get to yeah. the rules because you get the idea. This thing's super in depth. There's quite a few pages. It as, is, a, as a well, reference real quick, this is probably a good place for you to keep it separate if you want to paint yes. it. Keep the engine and the support separate and then the main so body. So you can get underneath it, yeah. Yeah, and obviously you want to keep your crew probably all separate to paint Yeah, them, for sure. Uh, for painting in stages, that's probably a good place to yeah. go right there. Um, get a little bit of a glare. Let me pull that up. But you get the idea. It's a pretty phenomenal kit. There's lots yeah. of stuff going on. Love that the last step is just add all these extra add things the onto it. Whatever. Uh, a little image there of the toolkit and the gun. Here are the rules. Let's take a look. Um, again, if you want to see these rules, go online to the website. You can find them all there. So, you um, basically, it has carbines, bombs, frag charges, drills, torpedoes, a supremacy mine, and then one of these gigantic guns. Okay. Uh, which is either the cannon, the skyhook, or the volley gun. I want to point one other thing out too, real fast. Mm -hmm. This thing has 18 wounds. Oh yeah. 18 wounds. That's only a four up save, which is pretty well, good still. It's, it's solid, yeah. <laughs> 18 wounds is up there, with, it's up there with the highest amount of wounds of any model. I think yeah. I think the only things that are higher are like Forge World models and Archeon maybe. Maybe. Uh, there's, it's pretty up there. Yeah. So, um, it's got also the embark, disembark rules, which you've seen before. I want to point one thing out. You know, the sky cannon is one shot, four, two, minus two D six. You know, sky hook is four, three, minus two D three. The volley cannon is 10 shots. <laughs> it's 10 shots. Now it's only four up, four up, minus one, one damage. It is 10 shots. You're still rolling 10. You're still rolling 10 dice for one gun. You have the potential to do a lot more damage than the other Oh attacks. yes. If you can reroll ones or increase that to three up, you're gonna be doing a lot of damage. Uh, if then only you have your, there were ways to do that. If only. There are. <laughs> and you have your torpedoes and carbines, which are just sort of come stock. And the carbines aren't great, but they're sort of the basic, like, yeah, defense yeah. gun. Uh, and it has so many special rules. Uh, navigators allow it to move extra D3 inches. Uh, it can raise a, a signal flag to <laughs> other sky vessels that increase stuff, like add two to the attacks of other shot carbines. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, or reroll hit and wound rolls of one against units that can fly. So, yeah. again, that big maw crush is coming at you. You just shoot it out of the sky. Shoot it down. Or don't. Yeah. I would prefer if you didn't. You would prefer that. <laughs> I, I like mock crushes. <laughs> a couple other things I want to point out real fast. Yep. It does have the overburden rule, if you remember from the frigate. This one actually has a carrier capacity of 20 up to 25. Uh, same stuff where you lose a wound for each model over, unless you have a special rule mm -hmm. like Brock. Where yeah, you if you can, you can carry on. 20 guys and be fine, you carry up to five more, but you're going to lose an inch off your movement, which is eight, which for a vehicle is not awesome. No, um, but, but it you is, get ways to- You get ways to improve it. And you know, there are, there are a lot of things that move a lot faster than eight that could not stand up to this. Yeah. 
Um, you can obviously set it up with stuff already embarked in, mm -hmm. and then your embark and disembark rules are the same that we've seen before. Yeah, so again, if you want to see the full rules and get a better idea, check it out on their website. On their website, go check them out. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much it for the uh, the Arcanaut stuff, the uh, Cardinal Overlords. We've got Brock Hudson. We've got the uh, the Ironclad here. Uh, let's hop out for a really quick recap. Well, that was the Arcanaut Ironclad and Brock Grungson. There you go. Nailed it. Uh, Pretty cool stuff. Uh, the Ironclad is yes. incredible. <laughs> yes. That is, an, that is a huge kit. The magnificent top hat. That's all. The magnificent is. top hat as well, but the detail, oh, the yeah. amount of guns and stuff on this Ironclad is incredible. I didn't know there was a dude on the back scrubbing the Oh yeah, shit. he's That's... fixing up all the stuff. There's guys up top with Man. their little compasses. There's little dwarves everywhere. Yeah, so. this this thing's really it cool. It is amazing. <laughs> for the uh, Cars on Overlords, I'm super pumped about for mm -hmm. them. Uh, I just want another ship game, like ship to ship naval combat now. With yeah. That's just the me. Battle Tome has some interesting bits about maybe a goblin pirate faction uh, as well. We'll, so get, we'll get to that. Might get into that in the yeah, future, but we'll see. for now, this one, uh, this Ironclad here is going to be one hundred fifteen dollars, which is actually a really reasonable price, I think. Yeah, we were talking about this it. Big and detailed. Uh, it's kind of strange. the 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 gunboat, the gun hauler, was forty. It's bucks. Like forty or fifty, yeah. Um, the frigate was eighty, which mm -hmm. we're like, okay, probably about average. Yeah, and then this one was one fifteen, and we're like, seems almost too low. Yeah. With other kits, you know, being up in the one thirty, one forty range, like crusher. the crusher, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, what is uh, what is Brock gonna run you? He's gonna be forty. Okay. Um, so for one hundred fifty bucks, you can get the biggest ship and uh, and their named leader. Seems about right. Which of course, you know, in the rules, which you know, obviously, he can just hitch a ride on there and just float along. Which oh is yeah. Great. Speaking of those rules, so, I mean, it's transports, mm -hmm. right? Like we saw that before with the frigate, and now we're seeing oh, yeah. it again. The transport um, rules are, are very nice, very streamlined, which uh, yeah. I really enjoy. So. And it, it makes it make sense. Yeah, which is really absolutely. Cool. So uh, from GW, of course, and yes. they are available right HCMR, now. Are they're out right now? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So go check them out. I'm Adam Ayer from Bulls. I'm Michael with Dragon Slayer Comics and Fantasy. And this has been another Tabletop Spotlight. Thanks again for watching. Tabletop Spotlight brought to you by Dragon's Lair Comics and Fantasy. Thanks for watching.